Hello and happy, happy Thursday. Sorry, I forgot to do this one thing before I got on live. So I'm doing it right now. So I'm silencing my phone because I want no interruptions while I'm sharing with you. Wow, we are in 2020. I kind of like saying that 2020. It just flows off the tongue. It just It's just got a really good feeling to it, a good energy. You know, and that's what I love about 2020 is that it's got a great energy. So as you can see, this week I'm talking to you about self-awareness and what you can achieve if you stop looking for the quick fix. Now, Tuesday I talked to you about clarity and today I'm going to talk to you about focus. But before I get started, I wanted just, just to remind you how essential it is for our emotional well-being to achieve self-awareness around our emotions so we make better decisions on how we respond when we are triggered based on how we're feeling. And achieving self-awareness really means just getting to know who you are, like really getting to know who you are as a person, how, being open to change uh, and accepting that change is inevitable because it is, and embracing that pivoting may be part of the process because that's also part of the process that we oftentimes resist along with change. Hello, I'm Leslie Cadet, and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients uh, achieve self-awareness around their emotions so they can handle their triggers, manage their emotions, and live a more positive life. I want to thank you. If you are uh, new to listening to me, I wanted to say welcome. And if you are listening, um, you've been following me for quite some time, I want to say welcome back. So this, as I said, this week is all about self-awareness. And I've talked to you about how pursuing a quick fix to fix your problems is not sustainable. And I also shared with you that if you let go of that, you can gain clarity. Before I get started, as you can see right behind me, I have what I call the triggers uh, cycle. And what this is, is something that we go through multiple times a day. Well, sometimes just once a day, but most of the times it's multiple times, right? Especially those of you who have kids, you know what I'm talking about. Your kids can push your buttons. Listen, if, even if you're in a relationship with someone, that other person can push your buttons. Um, or even just random people in your life can push your buttons. So this is something that we go on uh, through every day. As you can see, I've written in the middle, our cycle on repeat. And what this is essentially is that we have triggers, triggers that evoke an emotion. Our emotions are then fueled by basically the how, not severe, but how, how big the trigger is, how big the event is. And so that emotion that we're feeling will then often drive our response and the things, the way we show up and the things that we say and we do, which will take us down this path to getting the byproduct, our reward, which is positive or negative. So negative response. So some typically what happens is when you're triggered, that emo, emotion gets evoked, right? And so, as I said, it depends on how big that event is, meaning how big your emotion is, how you're going to show up emotionally. And as I said, it can be positive or negative in the things that you say and you do. So the negative route is when you uh, just blah, right? You just respond. Uh, something happens and you just say and do whatever in the moment because you feel justified. A lot of the time we do. We feel justified in our responses. But then after we've had time to think about it, we've had time to cool off, we realize that somebody got hurt in the process or maybe we undermined a goal that we're even working towards. Uh, so I'm just going to open this up a little bit, just get a little bit more light in here. And so what ends up happening is we often will go down that road to guilt, shame, and regret. That's our reward, our negative reward, meaning that we feel guilt for, you know, having showed up that way. We feel shame because we've allowed ourselves to go down that road and regret because we've done or said something that's been hurtful. And we've now got to go back and mend it. Now, the positive side is that you understand your triggers what they are, how they emotionally set you off and how they feel that emotion. And you can stop yourself and make better decisions on how you show up in the way that, that you respond and what you say or you do. So that is your positive um, response to your trigger. Some triggers could be like the anniversary date of loss or trauma, um, could be a scary news event, ending of a relationship, whether it's personal or professional, family friction, financial problems. So those are some of the um, triggers that could be you know, an event. And those are you typically internal, uh, meaning those are things that we've gone through our life and we have assigned a, a feeling and emotion to an event, comes a memory, gets filed into our memory bank, and we pull that out usually at a later time. So, and um, as an example, ladies, you know what I'm talking about when I say that we always say that we forgive, but we don't forget. So, especially if we're in relationships with someone, a significant other, and they do something, 
We are saying that we forgive them for, as we would say, their, tra their transgression, but we're usually holding on to that as ammunition to use at a later date to say, well, this is a repeating pattern instead of just letting it go. And that's healthier to let it go. So with that being said, having the, this little bit of an idea of what this is, in my two earlier lives, I asked you the simple question, which was, what if I told you there's a magic pill to fix everything? And I know a lot of people are looking for that quick fix, that magic pill, right? But of course, the answer to that is there isn't. There's really no quick fix to anything, okay? We try to take that road, but it's just not sustainable. It's in our human nature to always look for shortcuts for that quick fix. But when it comes to life and things that really, truly matter, like your overall emotional well-being, taking shortcuts or trying to find the quick fix isn't sustainable. And as I said earlier on Tuesday, I shared with you of how by not pursuing the quick fix myth, you know, by not focusing on finding a quick fix, you're open, opening yourself up to getting clear, to get to gaining clarity. And today I want to talk to you about something else that you can achieve when you stop looking for that quick fix, that fast solution, and you simply focus. That's it. Simply focus. That's what you get. Clarity is a big deal when it comes to our life. Being clear on our purpose, of course, being clear on things that we do with our life helps us to feel more focused and purposeful and accomplished. When you're clear on your path, you can truly start to focus on how to get there, how to achieve your goals. Being focused means that you're committed and dedicated to achieving your goals, and you'll shut, outside, out, shut out outside distractions so that you can and so that you do finish what you start and you do it well giving quality attention to that which you want to achieve. Now, the alternative to focus is doing a lot of everything at once. You know, multitasking. <clears throat> a lot of us wear it as a badge of honor. And I've said this before, but I feel that it's absolutely true that when you focus on several things at once, you're diluting your focus down so much that you'll often find yourself finishing something, but then having to go back and fix it later because instead of focusing on it and doing it well, you thought that by multitasking, that meant getting something done quality and getting it done quick, right? By doing everything at once. Really important tasks are not meant for multitasking. When you attempt to do too much at once, you'll find your choice dictated by urgency. You need to get it done fast, and so you do a lot at once and make compromise on quality work. You'll find... If you'll find if you try to do too much at once, you're, you'll find your choices are dictated by feelings of trying to fill someone else's priority for the tasks, meaning the pressure's on to finish without really fully thinking it through, so you do a lot at once. You find your choice dictated by feelings of being bullied by people. Now, they're not necessarily bullying you, but you might feel bullied by people who are telling you to get it done quickly, that it has to be done quickly, and you start feeling stressed out because you don't have ample thinking and planning times. So you, you're doing a lot at once, but you're feeling that you're being bullied. You'll, and you'll also find your choice dictated by feelings of get it done quick, and you may compromise on the quality of your work just to get it done. You may take the easy way out rather than thinking it through and doing it right the first time. You know, you say, well, that works. It could be better, but I don't have time to really focus on it. This is because you're doing so much at one time. So multitasking may seem like a badge of honor, but really when it comes down to quality, you'll often find times find yourself having to go back and fix things because again, your focus was diluted among too many things at once. So focusing on one thing at a time and finishing it well will bring you great joy and satisfaction. And you most likely will not have to go back and fix it. So that's something, whatever you finished, because you forgot something in the sequence. Because you allowed yourself to fully focus on it and do it well. So, as I said, I wanted to give you four benefits of gaining focus. As you can see, it's in the title notes, four benefits of gaining focus. Number one, you're faster. Yes, I know I've said that going fast isn't great, but if you're focusing on one thing, you are faster. Focusing on one thing at a time will allow you to do it well the first time around. And when you allow yourself time away from distractions, this is really important, meaning email, your phone, text messages, social media, you know, your DMs, your phone's going off at all times because you've got it on. Shut it off or silence it. Your brain becomes focused on that task if you allow yourself time away from distractions. Now, if you watched my live on Tuesday, you'll remember what I said about distractions. It takes an average of 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get yourself back on track after being interrupted. 
So imagine getting interrupted by your phone if you have your phone dinging away at you all day long. Imagine how much time is being taken away from you to do something quick and to do something well. That's why it's important to remove distractions. When you focus completely on one task at a time instead of trying to do it all at once, you're allowing yourself to complete your task faster, which leads me to number two, higher quality finished product. When you completely focus on one task at a time, you're allowing yourself to complete that task with a higher quality outcome and with fewer mistakes than if you were trying to do multiple things at once. When you multitask and switch off between different tasks, you're opening yourself up to mistakes because you're removing yourself from your spot and then trying to get back to that place where you left off when you go back to that task. And guess what? You could be in the middle of a brainstorming moment. Like, I don't know if you've ever found yourself there, but you're in your middle of a brainstorming session with yourself when you're working on something really important. Like, you're digging deep. You go deep. You're, like, in thought. And by switching to something else, you're creating a riffle. You know, you're creating a rift. You're creating the risk of forgetting what you were doing and never again regaining that flow. So focusing benefits you because you'll produce better quality and you'll feel more satisfied and confident, which leads me to another great benefit of having focus. And that is number three, greater creative flow. Your creative flow is better because you're focusing on one thing at a time. And like I just mentioned, if you're multitasking or trying to multitask, and you're switching from one task to another, you're, recre you're creating that risk of forgetting what you were doing and never regaining that flow. So totally focusing on one thing at a time will allow your creative flow to flourish and maybe put you on that path to a greater outcome than you expected, which leads me to last but not least, this is really important, number four, less stress. That's really important. I don't know about you, but I don't like to be stressed out. Too many distractions and distractions trying to multitask is stressful. When you're in that state of mind, it can take away your focus and cause your stress levels to rise and affect the quality of what you're trying to achieve. And in turn, you could fall behind in what you're trying to accomplish and time is precious, right? Again, remember what I said, it takes 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get back on track if you get distracted. So being totally focused on one thing at a time will allow you to, one, complete it faster, producing number two, a higher quality outcome, perhaps allowing for a much needed brainstorming session with a greater outcome than expected by number three, enhancing your creative flow, and thereby number four, reducing stress in your life. <laughs> Look, we all want to be able to do things quickly and do them well, but most of the time, we feel that we have to multitask, and that's usually because we have so much going on and, and we feel like we have so little time, and I get that. We all have the same amount of time though, right? And it's how we use our time, how we choose to use our time that will benefit us or harm, harm us. And I definitely feel that multitasking is more harmful to our time management than it is helpful. Now, with all of that being said, I just want to quickly remind you that we've now hit reset. We're in a new year and we're in a new decade. And maybe you're sitting on the fence of your life because you're dealing with this cycle and this piece here. You're on that perpetual hamster wheel and are having to deal, having to deal with so many emotions and so many things coming at you so quickly. And you're having difficulty in figuring out a plan to move forward with your life. I want you to know that I created a program built specifically around this cycle. It's my 90 Days Accelerator program, Manage Your Emotions, Master Your Life, and it goes live on Monday, January 6th. And it may be just what you're looking for to move your needle forward so that your emotions don't drive you and keep you off track of being the best version of you and of living your best life. If you're ready for change, if you're ready for more and you want to be an active participant in your life, moving, moving your needle forward with clarity, focus, and purpose, then click on the link in the title notes. And let's set up a call to see if you're right for the program. I hope you say yes to you because time waits for no one and will not wait for you to decide and to take a leap of faith for you. And if you're still on the fence about what you will do for you to start living your best life with clarity, focus, peace, joy, purpose, and of course, happier, it could be that you are looking for that quick fix to fix everything, which just is not sustainable. 
And maybe you're allowing your fears to be your master. And are you willing to allow yourself to stay chained to your emotions that are managing you? Allowing you to let that inner villain, that negative self-talk keep you a slave to your emotions because of your fears. Fear of the unknown. Fear that you're not worthy or good enough or capable. And so you let fear talk you out of living your best life. You can have a better life if you start believing in yourself. It is your choice to decide. So if you said, I choose me, then click on the link and let's see where this can go. The call's free and you will come away with some knowledge about you and your journey. And if you're ready for the program, or maybe you're not ready for the program, but it is up to you. Do you want to live your life with confidence, clarity, focus, and purpose? Do you want to be able to spot and handle these triggers, your own triggers, manage them so that they no longer manage this piece? that's been your master, that's what's possible for you. It's time to make a decision. Thanks so much for watching, whether you're on here live or watching it back, I truly appreciate your support. Remember to navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude because with the right attitude, it will set you up with the right mindset for when life happens and it will. I'm Lessa Gadet and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients achieve self-awareness around their emotions so that they can handle the triggers, manage their emotions, and live a more positive life. So I hope you choose you because you are the most important person in your world. Yes, you first. Because when you take care of you first, then you're able to show up as the best version of you for everyone else in your life who's important in your life. I hope you have a fabulous day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.